Hey y'all, it's Sade from Melanin Milk SD. I'm a certified doula, lactation consultant, childbirth educator, and a mom. And today I wanna to talk to you about milk supply. The formula shortage has had many people, many of my clients even panicking, and I'm here to hopefully bring some light to your day and ease the mania. So if you're worried about if you're producing enough milk for your baby, this is totally normal. Um, since you really can't see how much breast milk your body is making or how much your baby is drinking the same way that you can with a bottle, it can be a little unnerving. And trust me, there are plenty of ways to know that your baby is getting enough milk from you alone. Let's talk about a few reasons why parents may want to increase their milk supply. The number one reason right now, formula shortage. Also, food insecurity, natural disasters, the return of your period sometimes usually causes a little temporary but scary dip in your milk. Of chest or breast surgery, many people who have had breast implants or chest surgery are still able to breastfeed um, to some degree, didn't cut through the fourth intercostal nerve. Exclusive pumping, creamies, um, babies in the NICU, people with a sick child, or relaxation. Maybe you stop sooner than you would have liked to stop, but you want to start back up again. And you totally can. Results will vary depending on your commitment level. But relactating is totally possible. Um, induced lactation for people that are bonus parents, like LGBTQAI plus parents who want to share some of those feeding responsibilities if they have the parts Adoption to Adoption or surrogacy is another reason that people may wish to induce their supply, birth um, control methods that affect your milk production might make you want to in increase your milk or natural family planning even with something like the Ava band could be a really good solution to avoiding hormonal birth control options. Um, PIMS or perceived insufficient milk supply is another reason that people may want to increase their supply. Just the thought of thinking you may not have enough milk and also that can come from PMADS which is perinatal mood and anxiety disorders like postpartum depression, anxiety, um, all of those things, prenatal depression, prenatal anxiety, all of those things can affect the way that you think about your relationship with regards to chest and breastfeed. But most lactating parents do make enough milk for their babies. In the early weeks, many people will make more than what their baby actually needs. So the average lactating parent with a full milk production routine that's established and maintained will produce about 25 to 35 ounces of milk every 24 hours. In that first month of breastfeeding, if things are going well, then your milk production will dramatically increase from about one ounce or 30 mLs to um, on day one to around 30 ounces um, by day 40 postpartum. So when the milk supply is adequate, but there's other issues at play like excessive gas or growth spurt that might be causing that fussiness that coincides with the feeding times, that's when it leads parents to think, maybe I don't have enough milk. And when low supply does happen, it's usually temporary and with proper guidance, you can do things to bring it back up. First, I wanna address milk production and the anatomy of the breast. Your body started laying this framework for this chest and breastfeeding journey while you were going through your own awkward stages of puberty. Those little lumps on your chest that swell up with glandular tissue becoming these milk making houses for your future baby. That happened when you were going through puberty. And around 16 to 20 weeks pregnant is when those hormones facilitate the formation um, and the enlargement of those small sacs called alveoli in the breast tissue. And these sacs actually secrete um, milk during the nursing in response to your baby and suckling. the size of your breast doesn't affect milk production. We don't store a lot of milk in our breast as it is. On average, about three to four ounces, which is about enough for one feeding, so that makes sense. Remember, your boobs are sisters, they're not twins, so they will not always produce the same amount. And that amount varies throughout the day, it fluctuates by session. And this is so, so normal and many people think it's not. Don't freak out when you have one sister that decides to make two ounces and the other sister decides to make four, you still make six ounces, okay? Even if you say one makes two ounces and one makes one ounce, you made three ounces, that's enough for your baby's feed, right? You can switch back and forth between the two breasts during a feed as well. It doesn't matter which boob it came from, it just matters that you make sure you're draining both breasts um, frequently, effectively, and efficiently. We also have to remember that the time spent at the breast is not an accurate measurement of your baby's intake. Um, and how much baby consumes at a feeding, we have to watch their body language. That is so important to know when your baby is full or when your baby is hungry by watching their cues rather than watching the clock. Many parents think that a feeding session um, longer than an hour means 
that the baby is getting a lot of milk, but this isn't necessarily true and can even indicate a problem sometimes. Um, in the early days and weeks, babies might be slow to eat, but they should become more effective and efficient at eating over time. And the way milk production works is more demand on the system or the body through effective, efficient feeding at breast or pumping or even hand expression, the more milk that the body will make. It's very simple. The more you ask for, the more it makes. The less you ask for, the less it makes. But we're not perfect and neither is mother nature. So sometimes the body takes a day or two to catch up to the baby's increased um, milk demands, especially during a growth spurt. So this is really stressful, but it's very, very normal. And don't expect everything to work as planned. Don't expect your body to magically just catch up. Um, some people's do and some people's take a little bit longer and that's okay. Be realistic. You wanna set short-term goals. You want to be open to change. And that is how you're gonna be truly successful on this journey. So more breastfeeding together means less milk needs to be expressed. So the amount of milk a baby needs per day between the first first month and like six months remains pretty stable. On average, it's about 25 to 35 ounces, which is about 750 to 1,050 mLs per day. So it becomes more obvious that the more times each day that the baby breastfeeds directly, the less breast milk needs to be expressed or given to the baby while the um, parent and the baby are When we talk about feeding cues and full cues, we mean listening to your baby swallow while they feed. Look for milk in the corners of their mouth, especially after they unlatch. Um, watch for satisfied and content behavior after a nursing, like falling asleep after the feed. You know, the itis, we call it the itis in my culture. Um, after you have a big meal, especially after Thanksgiving, you just, you knock out, right? That's what happens to the baby. They eat, they eat, they eat. Once they're full, they get that itis, they go to sleep. Check for breast fullness. Um, it should feel a little less full than when you started the feed. And some more precise ways of making sure your baby's getting enough milk is watching for weight gain. About a half an ounce to an ounce a day is considered normal, about four to seven ounces per um, Having wet diapers of six to eight or more in a day is, is considered normal. Um, check for a good latch. Make sure your baby is latched well to make sure that they're drinking well. Um, frequent and full feedings. Make sure that you are feeding frequently and fully, fully draining the breast and feeding frequently, which is every two to three hours. Growth, make sure that your baby is growing. Are they visually getting bigger to you? Is their diaper size changing? Are their clothing size changing? Those are all indicators that you're doing something right. And we also wanna watch out for milk supply sabotage. Things like going too long between feeds or not using a hospital grade pump can affect your output and your overall supply. And don't let that pump fool you. You may not pump the same amount out as your baby can get out, which will make you worry a little bit that your baby's feedings are not adequate. That's not always the case. The pump can fool you, especially if you have it, um, if you have the wrong flange size or you just have a pump that your body is not responding really well to. True low milk supply can happen. Um, some of these can be managed, some can't be fixed or managed, um, but most can. And a true milk, so true low milk supply can be caused by a wide array of things from exhaustion to extreme stress, um, previous breast or chest surgeries, hypothyroidism, polycystic ovarian syndrome, also known as PCOS, belly births or recovery from a belly birth or traumatic um, birth, medications even, IGT also known as insufficient glandular tissue or underdeveloped breast, some chronic illnesses or just pure lactation failure, which is very, very rare. And all of these things have the potential to affect your milk supply giving you a true low milk supply, but most of them are not the case. So you think you have a low milk supply and you go to the cookies, you go to the teas. What do you do? Are these things actually going to help? Do you really need to go and get these cookies and teas? Oh, my milk supply is low. I'm going to go to Target. I'm going to go get those lactation cookies. I'm going to go get that mother's milk tea. I'm going to drink it all down several times a day, eat all these cookies as many as I can, and bam, I'm going to have a lot of milk. No. That's not gonna happen, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> a substance that increases milk supply is called a galactagogue, and galactagogues can include um, anything from foods to herbs to medications. And some of the most commonly used um, herbal galactagogues are moringa, fenugreek, um, blessed thistle, or alfalfa, also oats. Um, there are also prescription medications that can help induce or increase a milk supply, but before you decide on just going out and trying any of these things, 
I encourage you to work with the lactation professional to find out the root cause of these concerns, of your concerns of your low milk supply. Some types of galactagogues work better in particular situations and not in others, but all of these galactagogues, whether they're herbal or prescription, have the potential to have side effects and drug interactions that have to be considered for each individual person. And people with blood sugar issues, for instance, shouldn't use fenugreek. You want to refrain from using fenugreek if you suspect that you have blood sugar issues or if you know you have blood sugar issues. And opt to talk to a professional to find out what your alternatives are. If you do have some supply concerns, you may have to supplement your baby for a short period of time in order for you to get a handle on on where these concerns are coming from, what it is, what's causing it, and until then, the first rule of breastfeeding is feed the baby. So we have to feed the baby something. So supplementation has three options when your breast milk production is a bit off from your baby's intake demand. So what are your options when it comes to supplementation? You've got three options. You've got pumping, you've got human milk, you've got formula. Pumping extra milk with power pumping to mimic cluster feeding increases your output and I've seen a ton of success in my own practice, my own work with my own clients in helping them use power pumping as a way to give them a little supply boost. You can also ask for access to the milk bank. Um, human donor milk is totally safe, it's pasteurized. Also consider doing informal milk sharing um, with a trusted relative or close friend as long as you know who it is and where it came from. I would ask a lactation professional to guide you on this option to make an informed decision for yourself. With regards to formula, your options are organic or non-organic. I bet you didn't even think I was going to say that you could supplement with formula because lactation consultants don't believe in that, right? No, we feed the baby. If we need to feed the baby something, we're not going to let your baby starve. We're going to give you options. We're going to, a good lactation consultant is going to give you all your options and let you know what those They're are. They're all formulated according to the FDA requirements, but some have unnecessary added components like more iron iron or extra DHA, et cetera, et cetera. And none of these things are like breast milk, no matter what they say. I don't care what that can says. I don't care what that bottle says. It's not. It can't be similar to breast milk because one is man-made and one is human-made. And so human-made by the body. One's man-made and factory. So that's the biggest difference. So there's no way possible. There's too many components in breast milk that cannot be replicated in a powder or liquid form by a manufacturer. Consider plant-based, vegan, soy, or hypoallergenic for allergy or sensitive babies or dietary restrictions and concerns per medical reasons or if you have religious reasons. Do research and check the labels for recalls often. I even have a link in my blog on how to check recalls. And don't feel bad about combo feeding. Weaning from formula is very possible with the help of a lactation professional or pediatrician who is well versed in breastfeeding and weaning from supplementation. It's not something that has to be forever. It's something that you can totally use temporarily until you get your supply back up or you decide what you want to do. The only guaranteed way to increase your supply is to increase the stimulation. Effective, efficient milk removal or transferring from the breast frequently, often every two to three hours is the only guaranteed way to improve your milk supply. Power pumping. We talked a little bit about that. Mimics cluster feeding. It's a natural way to trick your body into doing what it naturally does best, but it does it sooner and more often, increasing stimulation and building and boosting your supply. You can try lactogenic foods. Those can be helpful. You can eat it if you like. Don't go out of your way to eat these things. Don't go buy a bunch of oats, a bunch of moringa, a bunch of fenugreek products because you don't know if it's gonna work for you and then you just threw all that money down the drain. Supplements. Try it with permission from your doctor or your midwife or your IBCLC. Moringa, smoothies, teas, tinctures, pills, those can all be helpful under proper guidance of an IBCLC or medical professional. You can also try treatments like massage or acupuncture for improving blood flow because your milk is made from your blood. So keep it flowing well to keep the production going well. Don't let these old wives tales or these TikTok tales take your money or play with your mind because body armor, coconut water, Gatorade, lactation smoothies, pink drinks, powder protein, protein powder, magic milk pills, those are not going to increase your supply. These drinks are all helpful in other ways like helping to balance or to restore the electrolytes in your body which will make you feel and be well hydrated, which is good for milk production, but it's not something that's going to increase your milk production. Milk is made from your blood. It is not made from your fluid intake.
And prescription drugs to induce lactation are most helpful if you'd like to feed an adopted child or a child through surrogacy or bonus parenting, or even if you want to start breastfeeding again after you've stopped um, for a while and you decide you want to restart maybe because of this crazy sh formula, formula, short, shortage formula, for formula shorted, sh formula shortage. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> Things are really possible. And with this formula shortage, this could be a real solution for you. No miracle pill or miracle substance or galactagog that will increase your milk supply in an abundance or to the desired effect. It just won't. Um, online and see all these pictures and videos of people pumping too much milk, but maybe that's an indication that something's wrong. You shouldn't have gallons of milk in your freezer if your baby is not drinking gallons what do you of need it for why are you pumping that much you see those people you need to rethink like what's what are they doing why are they pumping that much it's not necessarily a good thing to have an oversupply that can be detrimental to your mental health and your physical health oversupply is not great having gallons of milk in the freezer is not should not be the desire um, having the right amount of milk for your baby's needs should be the desire. your body will only create the perfect amount and the perfect type of milk for your baby or your baby. If there's more than one baby, then your body will adapt. It's amazing. If there's one baby nine times out of 10, your body will produce the right amount of milk for that baby. And given the right support and guidance, you should be able to handle it should you run into any problems or concerns. And at the end of the day, the best way to increase your milk supply is to feed, to pump more often, offer the breast to your baby, all the time, many time, um, at least every two to three hours to develop a routine and become more confident and comfortable with breast and chest feeding. So those are all the tips that I have for you for today. I hope you enjoy the video next about the formula shortage, more specifically on tips and ways to find formula and do not make formula, do not dilute formula. Those things are harmful to your baby. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. things in my eye. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, like and subscribe my video, share with a friend or client or relative, and until then, happy birthing and happy feeding. Wait, don't forget to follow me at Melon and Milk SD and my website, melonandmilksd.com. See you soon.